Do we have any SpongeBob fans watching? Because I can't be the only one who thought about this scene the entire episode. It was an Alaskan bulwark! Why don't they just take the city and push it somewhere else? That's a bad impression. What is up, Flick fans? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are talking Season 2, Episode 1, or Chapter 9 of The Mandalorian. We're going to dive into the episode, what I liked, what I didn't like. There's not a lot of that. I was so excited, so much anticipation for the return of The Mandalorian. Season 1 was incredible. I was pleased with this episode. This is a spoiler-filled video, so if you haven't seen the episode, I um, probably shouldn't watch it. To be honest, I won't be able to help myself because the final shot, the, the final shot, did anybody else freak out? I freaked out. But we'll get into that if you guys enjoy these weekly recaps. Be sure to come back, drop this video a thumbs up. Okay, let's get into it. So we start out in true Mandalorian form with some epic shots of Mando and Baby Yoda just kind of strolling through. It does in its own way have that side mission type feel at the beginning of the episode and the way that it plays out is extremely similar to that Spongebob episode. It was big! It was all wiggly! But the idea of getting everyone in this episode to work together, have the Mandalorian do some epic things like he does, I really enjoyed it. It's very much a western type episode as well, kind of falling back on uh, one of my favorite aspects of season one. It has that flair, it has that tone, uh, and it really captures the magic of Mandalorian once again. I'm glad we were able to jump right into it. A lot of it does start with Ludwig Goretzen's score, uh, the music in this episode right back into the swing of things, man. It's incredible. But also, John Favreau directing this episode, uh, it has that type of magic to it. So overall, really great episode. But let's talk specifics. And the first thing we hear, you know this is no place for a child. And Mandalorian says, wherever I go, he goes. Once again, establishing that relationship. And what we're seeing is a battle between two Gamorians, a.k.a. the familiar green-skinned creatures that we've seen countless times in Star Wars, coming from the outer rim of Gamor. Bit of a Jabba the Hutt connection there. Most of them have been employed through him. And as always, the Mandalorian getting himself into a bit of a pickle. This individual is after his Beskar armor. He's not gonna let that happen, though. He's ganged up on, but that's not gonna stop old Mando. After an epic fight scene, Mando asks him, where is the Mandalorian that you know of? And the answer that he gets is not one that he's expecting. He says, Tatooine. So already we are venturing into very familiar Star Wars territory. And so in episode one, journeying to Tatooine with that theme music kicking in at the beginning, we know we are in for something special. By the way, the music in this scene, this little introduction here, just incredible. And hey, there is a familiar face, one of my favorite characters from season one. She also calls Baby Yoda a womp rat at one point. Get your hands off Baby Yoda. Don't you call him that. So we venture to Mos Pelgo, which is a place that I'm personally a bit unfamiliar with. I I'm not 100% if we've ever been here in Star Wars before, but it's nice to get away from Mos Eisley. And when I say before, I do mean in the movies and television shows. This could be our first time uh, seeing this play out on screen. By the way, every time we get a shot of Baby Yoda, I just get so happy. We get a lot of them this episode. They know what we like. And then we are introduced to the character that our boy Mando is after, and it kind of just looks like a, like an off-brand Mandalorian. Kind of doesn't really know how to dress. It's like you have your fancy version, and then your Halloween costume a little bit. And first off, just the detail in this scene of the blue milk and all of the Star Wars-y references that we get within this conversation, it, it's so great. And then just kind of confirming that it's not actually a Mandalorian. He takes his mask off, no big deal. Uh, but looking at this mask, doesn't this mask look familiar? Have we seen this somewhere before? Okay, well, maybe not. Maybe I'm crazy. And uh, look who it is, actor Timothy Oliphant. You'll recognize him from projects such as Justified, uh, recently Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, an extremely talented actor. Uh, nice cameo for sure. Also, the same age as my dad, so that's cool. Yes, I, I just want you to know, I did have blue milk when I went to Galaxy's Edge. It was delicious. I don't know if it was actually blue milk. Um, kind of tasted like pineapple. His name is Cobb Vanth. He is the Marshal of Mos Pelgo. Clearly not a Mandalorian. This is armor that he salvaged. But he does have this calm sense of confidence about him that I believe makes him a formidable foe to Mandalorian. 
or maybe a friend. So it kind of looks like we're about to get a showdown between these two characters until we start to see the ground shake, a bit of rumbling. There seems to be some sort of giant creature essentially running this town. What is it? It was an Alaskan forward! It's not, but the way this episode plays out is eerily similar. There's even the meeting between the entire town. And it ain't everything! It's horrible! <laughs> just, I just love it. And oh my goodness, it's the sandworm from Dune. It's the Alaskan bullworm. This creature looks incredible, by the way. The special effects are second to none. So, what is this creature? This is a crate dragon. They are large carnivorous reptiles that come from Tatooine. They're actually hunted for precious pearls found in their bodies. There are two subspecies. We could go into many details. Is it a greater crate dragon? Is it a canyon crate dragon? It's just cool to see the Star Wars lore kind of come to life and the design on this creature uh, is once again fantastic. So we do have a deal being made here. You help me kill this dragon, I will give you the armor that you seek. I like the relationship between these two characters already, and uh, Oliphant really fits into this universe extremely well. Then we get a bit of backstory on this location, a very familiar moment being displayed here, where he says it started with the Death Star blowing up, the second one, that is. It's nice to see the connection. We know the connection is there, but again, just to harken back to all of these moments is really cool. The excitement on everyone's faces here also is incredible. So after some more interesting backstory, we finally confront more familiar faces. These are the Tusken Raiders who Mandalorian convinces to help them on their almost impossible quest. This is one of the first times we've seen the Tusken Raiders working together uh, with another group of people. Again, bringing everyone together to take down a common enemy uh, thanks to the Mandalorian. You love to see it. You love to see it. By the way, where do I learn to speak Tusken Raider? Is there a class? Is that how that works? So then we spend a good 10 to 15 minutes trying to figure out a way to take down this epic creature. And that's when we get the town meeting. Listen, we have to work together. We don't really want to work with the Tusken Raiders. Too bad. It, it's got to happen. So after some convincing, the journey begins, which turns into the inevitable battle where all of our characters are together. Uh, they have... A pretty concrete plan, but can they execute? That's when we get the epic showdown. Again, look at these visuals. The Crate Dragon uh, takes out many of our kind of background characters, but still our heroes. Also, this picture is funny to me. I want to know how that works. And after an epic battle, we have Mandalorian uh, essentially Jonah and the Wailing It. Strap some bombs to a Bantha, use it as bait. Poor Bantha. And everybody's like, did the Mandalorian just, just get eaten by the big sandworm? There he is. That's our boy. He flies out at the last second, blows him up. We have chunks of, of dragon meat. And as the deal stated, the Mandalorian gets that armor that he was after the entire time. Uh, so the episode comes to a close, right? That's the end. No. Of course, we have to get teased with something. It's the first episode, and it's not just a tease. It's something that A was confirmed a bit ago that uh, he was reprising his role, but we didn't know when we would see him right off the bat. <laughs> it's Boba Fett in the flesh. We did get a reference to the Sarlacc pit earlier in the episode, and as soon as that was mentioned, I said to myself, is this the episode where we get Boba Fett? Probably not. You see the helmet, you see the armor, it's also recognizable, so you know his presence is being felt, but will he appear in the episode, and what is his role going to be? Well, I have a feeling his role is going to be huge, not only because he's established in the first episode, but also because Tamora Morrison, who played Jango Fett and, of course, plays Boba Fett, uh, is a huge part of Star Wars lore, is reprising his role technically, sort of, as the character. And this tease in front of the sun with the epic music playing tells me that there will be uh, a huge role for him later in the season. Now, I have a feeling that maybe the next episode we're going to step back from that, maybe uh, go back to Giancarlo Esposito's character. But just like we saw from multiple characters uh, throughout season one, every, maybe every other episode, uh, it does feel like that reoccurring role. And oh my goodness, that shot is going to have Star Wars fans 
talking. This is a spoiler video, so you can talk about it in the comments down below. Please leave your comments. I love the fact that we thought all we were getting was Timothy Oliphant's character in Boba Fett's armor, but then we get Boba Fett. What a shot. Almost as cool as the Darksaber shot at the end uh, of Season 1. Cobb Vanth is a character that I believe will return as well. His first appearance was actually the Aftermath series. So not the first time we've seen him in the Star Wars universe, but it was a really cool, uh, interesting role. When will we see Ahsoka? What characters are appearing in the next episode? Leave your predictions down below. And again, if you like this weekly series, we're going to keep it going. So thank you guys again for watching this video. So much fun talking The Mandalorian, and uh, I was so happy to see them battle the Alaskan Bullworm.